Narrabeen Lagoon. Right in the heart of the northern beaches, this splendid body of water is surrounded by an expansive 55 square kilometer catchment. Both spectacular and beautiful, for some, inspirational. It all lies just a stone's throw from the center of Sydney. The catchment is roughly bound by Mona Vale Road, Forest Way, Waringa and Pitwater Roads. Four main creeks direct all the water that falls here into the lagoon. We're going to explore this unique area with help from some of the locals. Meet the keepers of long-held wisdom and find out about the work being done by bush carers with an unbridled passion to protect the nature of Narrabeen Lagoon and its catchment area. Local resident David James has lived in the catchment all his life. Most days you'll find David setting off on a morning row. I grew up not 100 metres away from here in a lovely old stone and weatherboard cottage built in 1923. And my brother and I lived on, in and under this lagoon nearly all the days of our young lives. Swimming, fishing, sailing, making tin canoes, it was just a wonderful childhood and that fostered my deep love of this lagoon and I'm so pleased to be here today, sitting on this very spot. David's appreciation of these waters is typical of the many local residents committed to protecting the lagoon. The area also has great meaning for Dennis Foley. Like David, Dennis's childhood experiences have shaped his deep respect for the Narrabeen catchment, albeit in a very different way. It's almost like a face, the two eyes and the nose. A beautiful colour. Dennis is a direct descendant of the Guy Marigal people, and their connection to the lagoon can be traced back thousands of years. Prior to the 1950s, our people had a, an unbroken connection to this land. Grandma lived in Harbord and she had a strong connection with her people. And when I was born, I grew up with my grandmother. So great are the natural and spiritual riches here, Dennis describes the catchment as a crucible or placenta of life for him, his family and Aboriginal ancestors. Narrabeen Lake is the placenta of our life. It's the placenta of, of all things of knowledge. Narrabeen provided our food, it provided our spiritual well-being, it provided everything we needed to know. So Narrabeen Lake is an incredible centre of the universe for us. The Narrabeen catchment's natural bounty, so valued by so many, results from the remarkable variety of habitats found here. Ecologists describe distinctive groups of plants, along with all the other life forms they attract, as an ecological community. You'll find about 27 such communities in the catchment, 21 of which are considered rare or endangered.
The sandstone swamp is particularly special. Sandstone swamps are generally found higher up in the catchment area, usually perched on the edge of rocky precipices. These remarkable elevated wetlands play a vital role as water regulators. They soak up moisture after rains, and that same moisture slowly oozes out over time. Critically, this helps all the creeks and streams in the catchment to keep flowing year-round, whatever the weather. The role that sandstone swamps play can't be overestimated, for the story of life in the catchment ultimately rests on water and its flow. Small trickles combine to form streams and these slowly build into four main creeks. Ultimately, it all ends up at Narrabeen, where Lagoon meets the sea. It's important to remember everything that happens up high ultimately affects the lagoon below. Whether it's the falling leaves from a mighty gum, suds from a car wash, or stormwater loaded with nutrients from lawn food and even dog poo that's washed into nearby drains. As wondrous as the catchment's natural features are, there's no escaping the profound effects development has had over the past 100 years. In the 1940s, there was little development. It's a dramatic contrast to what we see today. Ricky Coglin is all too aware of how development can affect the natural environment. I can hear the uh, eastern yellow robins calling at the moment. Ricky's a local bird expert. Different habitat types, ecological communities, attract different kinds of animals. And in the animal world, variety is most easily seen by looking at birds. The diversity and abundance of bird life in this bush is fantastic. We've got everything from your treetop dwellers through to our uh, mid-storey birds, which include thornbills, eastern yellow robins, and of course a lot of great fairy wren and scrub wren activity as well taking place right down on the forest floor. Birds can be a great indicator of the health of a patch of bush. Urban bushland habitats that have a diversity of soil and plant types will have a greater diversity and abundance of bird life within them. Where human intervention has caused a loss of diversity in vegetation, well, there's a corresponding loss of diversity in bird life. And this is a key reason why preserving as much urban bushland as possible is really important. The Wheeler Creek Valley lies just behind Cromer. It leads into one of the most pristine gullies on the peninsula. The birds here also hold special significance. Where you have a very important site, you usually find there's a correlation with small birds. Wheeler's Creek has got an immense variety of small birds, which signifies the importance of the site because the birds, in our beliefs, are the messenger from the spirits. As a child, Dennis spent quite some time here learning traditional Aboriginal wisdoms from his older relatives. 
The thing that I can always remember about it is the, is the awe and the level of law that was maintained by uh, my uncles and my aunties. It was a place that compared to a, uh, a cathedral, it was a place of great reverence. It was a place of war. Central to it all is this particularly significant rock ledge. It's covered with ancient engravings. Sharks. Kangaroos. People. These aren't just shapes scratched into sandstone. Each is associated with complex stories that convey meaning, morals, and learning. For centuries, boys and girls gathered here to learn about their society and environment, and ultimately, to come of age. To think that the boy may leave his mother and never see her again at that very rock site that we're talking about at Willis Creek, uh, makes it an amazing sight. How many tears were shed there, how many hearts were broken, but you knew that your child was leaving there for bigger and better things. <laughs> 